I have a Siglent SDG 1025 function generator. I wanted to connect an external reference to. Um, I've also got this Raquel Dana 1992 counter that everybody likes. It's got the hopped up uh, crystal oscillator in there with a little oven and all that. Um, so I wanted to hook the two together. Ran into a little bit of trouble, but nothing that was insurmountable. I looked, but I didn't find a spec for the external reference input on that SDG1025, but uh, in the Raquel Dana manual I did find that the output's supposed to be uh, 1 volt peak to peak, plus or minus 0.4 volts, pretty big tolerance, but it measured right around 1 volt peak to peak, which is like 4 dBm. Um, so I, I threw caution to the wind and uh, hooked it up and uh, put the clock source to external and uh, it was obviously not using the external clock source. It was, it was either given no output or struggling to do anything. So I tried to get a hold of Siglent to see what the input spec on it actually was because I figured that was probably the issue. Um, and I, I didn't have a lot of luck getting a hold of them through their website, but I got a hold of somebody at tequipment.net, which is where I bought it from, and they were able to put me in touch with the right person. Everybody was super helpful. I found out the input spec on that's uh, 3.35 volts peak to peak. And so if it was a 50 ohm input, that'd be like 14 and a half dBm, but it's, it's not. It's like a higher impedance input. So the net result was that I needed like 5.6 dB again. I put together a prototype from some parts I had around the shop. It's just a little two transistor job. It's got uh, the first one here is in like a common emitter setup uh, for voltage gain. And the second one's a buffer amplifier. It's like a emitter follower to drive the, well, it's not a 50 ohm load, but uh, whatever we got going on there. So this worked fine and everything was happy. Um, but the packaging was a little crude for everyday use. So I went maybe, maybe a little crazy and uh, did a board layout and, and kind of a fancy mechanical design and uh, ordered some boards from dirtypcbs.com. Those showed up and came packed real nice. Uh, look at this. I mean, they're just circuit boards, right? But uh, even like hermetically sealed in here. And uh, I thought they came out nice, uh, especially for being cheap. And they threw in a, a couple of little extras. They give you some tweezers and uh, some, uh, some cool stickers there. So I went ahead and put it all together. I got uh, all the nice BNC connectors. I even got like a, a little cover on the fuse there, light and a power switch, all that good stuff. And uh, oh, I, I don't know if you can see them here, but there's even little uh, little gold plated fingers there to make contact with the case. And in there I got capped on film over most of it. But down here at the end there's a place for those fingers to land to, to ground the case there. And uh, Slips right in. Ah, there we go. And it's a happy little box. So now my life's improved. I got uh, one more shiny little box on the bench. And uh, no troubles. Well, almost no trouble. There's uh, like a software bug or something. If you've got the um, clock source set to external, and you turn it off, you turn it back on, then when it comes back up, there it is, you can see that's, it's using the internal clock source there. So if you go in, I thought, oh, well, maybe it just resets when you turn it off. And uh, no, it still says external. If you toggle it back to internal, yeah, that's what I thought. Back to external. Oh, now it's external. So I emailed the guy I was talking to at Siglin about that and asked, uh, you know, maybe that it was something they might fix in a firmware update. He said they were going to talk to R&D about it and uh, see what they could do. I haven't heard back yet, but I'm hoping for the best. Meanwhile, not a big deal, just something you got to remember to do if you're using the external reference. So hey, thanks a lot for checking out my video. Um, 
I actually put it together yesterday, but there were a couple of parts uh, where I made a mistake. I just couldn't let it slide. So uh, that's why in a couple of scenes you'll see me wearing this uh, blue shirt rather than the orange one and uh, holding my notes so I don't make uh, more mistakes that would necessitate further fixing. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you got questions or something, leave a comment. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this one, hit the subscribe button and I'll try and get them for you.